Welcome everyone to another one of our Tuesday Facebook Lives. It's a bitter cold day in Kansas. One of those days for staying in and sewing, which I'm going to do not at my house, but at my office. So I can't wait. Well, I can't wait to do this Facebook Live, but I also can't wait for it to end so I can go sew. And I hope you're doing the same thing today as well. So last Friday was the launch of our very first So Confident Series 10 class for January. And we made the Mason top. Thank you all for joining us. For those of you who uh, did join us, you got an email last Friday at about 10.45 in the morning that included the link to the class that you can watch anytime forever. It also included your information of how to access your private Facebook page. And that's been very active. It's really been fun to see what you've been posting. There have been lots of Mason tops posted with lots of variations, which I'm loving. Lots of great fabrics, lots of great sleeve variations, neck variations, and so forth. So check that out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're going to get a couple of emails this week about how to access the Zoom calls, which are on Thursday, this coming Thursday. This is Central Time, noon Central Time, 6 Central Time. So we're looking forward to your uh, live questions there. My daughter, Alex, will be the monitor of that Zoom call. She'll be feeding the questions to me. So you'll be typing them in in the chat section of Zoom and I'll be answering them. I have gotten some questions from people, from uh, many of you on uh, email and by phone as well. So I'm prepared for a few questions that I know that you already have. And then next week, I think is the beginning of February, I can't believe it, and we're on to our second video class. So on the February 1st, you'll be getting a, a new email about the project for February, which is the joggers of the Mason top and jogger pattern. And we have some new limited edition fabric colors for you. I know a lot of you ordered your combinations in the 1st of January, but half of you have already made all of them anyway, so you might want to supplement your little fabric stash or have a new kit to make for the class in February. So that's coming to you on February 1st. All the information about how to get prepared for the February jogger class. So I wanted to tell you what's new at the sewing workshop, what has happened in just the last week. I have some projects to show you. So some of you have been following my sewing woes. You all know that I made this Mason top in this great red textured sweater knit. And I carried around the cut pieces of the joggers for about three weeks. I finally sat down and made them last Sunday. It was a great Sunday afternoon project. Didn't take me all that long. And so here is this blush colored uh, cotton knit with the black drawstring. And I finally have my ensemble, which we took a photograph of last Friday. And I think we'll probably see that on the private Facebook page or general social media or whatever. So I finally finished my outfit. And in the same color tones, Deb, who you have yet to meet, walked in yesterday to our office. This was her weekend project, and this is so darn cute. I can hardly stand it. This is the Hudson top with the long sleeves, and she's added this skirt to it, and the cuffs, and the cowl. Now, the cowl is part of the pattern. She did add the cuffs, and she did add the skirt. But she didn't do anything to the circumference of the Hudson top. She just doubled and took off a little bit of this brand new knit that we have in this mauve and black. So this is a wonderful viscose knit. We have it in blue and black and this wonderful blush mauve and black. And then she uses the uh, Cricut system to create these vinyl, what are they called again? Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's an embossed uh, thing. <laughs> Those of you who are the cricket people know what the terminology is. I am so sorry. I don't own one. Maybe I should get one, or at least read the web website. But at any rate, these were two different designs that come with her monthly subscription 
to Cricut. She pays $10 a month to get, I think, unlimited designs. Don't quote me on that. But for sure, she got two designs. <laughs> and she's embossed the front of this uh, fleece Hudson top. I think this is so cute. She had it on with leggings, black leggings. She had on boots. She had on blush pink socks. Oh, she looked darling yesterday. And then Kathy waltzed in last Friday. Now, this is black, so I know that it's hard for you to see it. But this is a Maison top in a very textured black knit. This is the knit part. And then she's used silk pieces to make the sleeve. She lengthened the sleeve and used a little bit of elastic at the bottom of the sleeve. But I've been getting some questions about eliminating the band on the bottom of the Maison. And she eliminated the band and simply cut pieces of silk and pieced woven bands. So this is not drawn in. It's not a knit band. It's not ribbing. These are sections of pieced fabric that she's used as a bottom embellishment to this Maison. I think it's really elegant, really beautiful. Takes this into a totally different sort of garment. Uh, definitely casual, but I think you could dress it up as well with some great jewelry, a scarf, or whatever, and uh, wear it just about any place. So that's what this week has been all about for us. Finishing projects, making new ones, sewing at home while the weather is bad and we're not going out. So I hope you're doing the same thing. Today we're going to talk about two different kinds of fabrics. One, a chambray, and the other, the Liberty of London cottons. So some of you may know that chambray is really a cousin of denim. We think of denim as the heavyweight, chambray as the lightweight. Denim and chambray have the same properties in that there is a colorful warp and a white fill. I may have that reversed. Let me look at my notes. Colorful warp and white filling, that's correct. So the fabrics are always some sort of color on the face, generally blue, but not necessarily. And on the back side, it's white. That's how you can identify chambray and denim. And we think of chambray, I think, as being in cotton, mostly. But we have this new group of five colors of chambray that have half rayon, 50% rayon. So it's 50% cotton, 50% rayon. And that gives them a drape like you don't get with standard cotton chambray. We've got these five colors. Now, we were testing our color this morning and realizing that these are a little bit maybe washed out and they're not as blue on the screen as they really are in person, but they are beautiful colors. This is a very uh, pale blue. You can see that it's a different color on the wrong side. This is a more a uh, deeper powder blue, but again, two different colors with the white filling and the colorful warp. Good old standard denim blue. Again, the two colors. This is deep indigo. Looks gray on the back, but that's a white filling still, and with the dark color, it turns it more gray. And then a black version as well. So you can see how drapey this fabric is. It's fantastic fabric. Feels like a million dollars. It's very soft and easy to care for, super washable. I think you'd really, really like to wear it pretty much all season. So what do you make out of this fabric? Well, you can make the Cortona shirt, which is the same one that I have on. You can wear it as a little jacket, which I'm doing. It has a peplum in the back that has a little bit of easing across here. And that seam comes around and ends in a dart right here. And then there's a bust dart that's diagonally coming from that seam, or from that dart, actually. It has a all-in-one collar and stand. So for those of you who don't like to construct two-piece collars and stands. This is all one, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute of how to deal with that. A nice three-quarter length sleeve with a band and a vent. So you can wear it as a shirt. You can wear it as a jacket. 
But to me, it's just that great alternative to a denim or chambray shirt or jacket, particularly in these fabrics. Now, I've put it over a, a little pop of orange, a knit t-shirt, and I pulled out this great knit. I'm loving this knit. This is a viscose knit, 60 inches wide, beautiful colors, lovely drape. Would make a wonderful, wonderful t-shirt. You know, even if you don't love the color of orange, you put it with denim, and I think anyone can wear this. Doesn't matter your coloring. It has greens and magentas, creams, navy blue, jade green, all kinds of great colors to it. I would also wear the Zona. This is the Zona jacket lengthened. And you can see that this has been pieced. So pieces and parts of this are this fabric. The, I think it's the indigo color. And this is a different sort of denim, but lightweight as well. And the collar's been contrasted. The sleeves are two-piece, and the sleeves have been, the under part of the sleeve have even been pieced even more with some cottons. And the back has this beautiful, what I call triple pleat to it. Really interesting detail to this garment. The seams are what I call torqued, they're twisted. So the right side seam is on the diagonal to the back, and the left seam, left side seam is diagonal towards the front. Very flattering. And it has this wonderful detail of a hidden placket. The buttons are inside of this placket, and in this case, the inside of the placket has been contrasted with the same cottons. And then you can make, as Aaron did, the Frankie shirt in this fabric. And this is pretty much the indigo color. This must be a color that we had before, but this is the very same fabric. You can see how drapey this garment is. And for the Frankie that has a lot of volume to it, you want a fabric that's quite drapey. This has some diagonal seams across the back, a top stitch detail here that opens up into a pleat, and then these open but overlapping vents at the bottom. It's a single collar, and the front has side seam darts. So there's not a true side seam to this garment, so it's a very interesting garment to make. The sleeves are two pieces with a seam that's diagonal across the front. So this is a fun garment to make with not a lot of fitting issues. All you have to do is measure the bust, make sure it fits you in the bust, do your shoulder adjustments, whether you're narrow or wide, and you're good to go on this garment. I don't think too many people have to worry about the, the uh, circumference of the hips. I have to point out that since Erin made this, I always have to make fun of her because this is nicely top stitched, this sleeve. And this sleeve, she forgot to top stitch. So there it is, it's hanging there, just ready to be top stitched. We've been talking about this for months. Who's going to top stitch this? No one ever does. Maybe this is this Sunday's project. What do you think? Erin, I'm handing this to you so you can take it home. <laughs> so, you can, so you can finish it. <laughs> Uh, or you can use tape, whatever, or staples, <laughs> or glue. <laughs> I've been known to do all of that. <laughs> all right. Um, so those are some possibilities for garments to use this beautiful chambray fabric that we have. But the other category of fabric that I want to talk about is Liberty of London. Whenever I say that, I, I'm always assuming that everybody knows about Liberty of London, but not everybody does. And when my daughter lived in London, uh, I got to go visit her a couple of times, and we, of course, went to the Liberty of London store, which is a very famous store in the heart of London on Regent Street. That store has the look of a ship, in a way, because the building, the structure of the building is using pieces and parts of wood from old ships. But this store was built in 1875 by Arthur Liberty. And it was his idea to bring in beautiful rugs from India and the Orient 
and also sell fabric. And so they became famous for their, their miniature mini prints, as we call them, mostly on cotton, although they were doing some silks at the time as well. As things have evolved, the store is still very much the feel of what it was back then, and yet it, it has incredible, updated, really high-end, trendy brands of clothing, cosmetics, shoe, shoes, and jewelry, but this whole floor of fabrics. And so whenever we take our, our London textile tours, of course, we go there, we buy fabric, we buy the notions, we, we spend some time at the Liberty of London fabric floor of Liberty of London. So today, they have an in-house design team, and they, but the fabrics are printed in Lake Como, Italy. They, ha they produce over 50,000 yards or meters. Is it a day or a week? I have to read my notes because I find I can't. Oh, yeah, 50,000 meters of fabric a day. Now, that's a lot of fabric. And 150 designs a year. They're very famous for what's called Tana Lawn cotton. The cottons are incredibly soft, silky, silk-like. We were comparing this particular cotton to some other cottons that we have in the store. And there's just a feel about this that no one has ever been able to replicate. The price of these cottons tend to be higher than most cotton fabrics that we see, and definitely more than the standard quilt cottons that you find. Even though they're printed cotton, there's just really nothing like them. They're soft, they're durable, and super washable, easy care, and they don't wrinkle all that much. When I was bringing these into the studio uh, yesterday, I sometimes have to press some fabrics before I put them on the wall or show them to you, but I didn't have to press these fabrics. They'd been on the, the shelves for a while, and they did not wrinkle, so I love that property about them. Uh, Liberty, in addition to their in-house in design team, also contracts with various designers and have for over many, many, many years. And Sarah Campbell is one of the designers that they had, have used in, uh, to a, a certain extent, or a big extent, actually, over the years. And as some of you know, Sarah Campbell was here. She's a London designer. She was here last February, and we did a fabric painting class. And it was so much fun. And we have a surprise for all of you coming up about a collaboration between the Sewing Workshop and Sarah Campbell. So watch for that. And then if you are a Nike follower and bought some tennis shoes in 2012, you would have had some Liberty of London Nike high top tennis shoes. So those are the kinds of people that they collaborate with worldwide and make it really fun. So um, they have 45,000 designs in their archives if you can believe that. And it's an incredible room of volumes and volumes and volumes of books of the samples that go way back to 1875. So it's an interesting company. And we carry a few of the cottons. Not all of them are that appropriate, in my opinion, for garments, although Liberty would um, disagree with that. But uh, we do have a few. And I wanted to show them to you. So this is a beautiful dark base fabric with some beautiful aqua and teal and soft gray and various blues. Here's one that's quite a mini print. Little leafy patterns in some soft blues on a white background. I love this red. I'm taking a class in a couple of weeks from Ectacol again, and we're doing mapping of our walking trails. So last weekend, or a couple of weekends ago when I was in Arkansas, I was picking up red berries to add to my personal mapping of my trail. And this fabric reminds me of that, these beautiful little berries, the red berries, with a little bit of uh, probably dark navy blue or black, it's hard to say, of little small leaves. But again, you can see the, the beautiful drape of this. 
doesn't make any noise when you drape it. Some, some cottons do. This is very quiet and soft. And then we have another print. This is rayon, actually. But to me, it has the feel of a soft cotton and the look of Liberty of London. Lots of great little colors of tangerine and orange and blue and green. And I think this would make a great fabric to mix or to use as a garment as well. And then I have one up here, a little mini print that's a cotton. I'm not saying that our regular cottons aren't nice. They don't have quite the feel of the Liberty of London. This one has a nice feel to it, but it's not a Liberty. And this is a, uh, a blue background with fuchsia and yellow and white, just a nice mini print. So I'm thinking of these as not just garments, but as these trims, instead of the all cotton monochromatic sort of indigo look here, you could take this under sleeve and piece this. Use three or four or five pieces, <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, of the print. You could have a print collar, which becomes also the facing. You could use some of the prints on the inside of the placket and definitely could really have some fun with the back yoke and part of this pleat. So I think for the Zona jacket, just those little bits and pieces of Liberty of London go a long way. If, even if you just buy a yard of these fabrics and have, I think you'd find ways to incorporate them into your designs as trims and pipings and bindings and uh, edges and hems and cuffs and all sorts of things. So, Consider those as um, consider those as fabrics that you need to have a little bit of in your stash, to just in case. All right, um, I want to talk about one other thing. We have collars on all of these garments: the Cortona, the Zona, and the Frankie. And so you want to interface them properly. Now we carry two categories of interfacing. We carry the Japanese ultra sheer fusibles and we have them in white, black, and nude. You can see how sheer and drapey these are we only use fusibles now. I haven't used a woven interfacing in many, many years. These don't add a lot of stiffness, but they add support. And so in my opinion, this Japanese fusible interfacing is sort of the standard, the gold standard of what to use for interfacings for collars, plackets, cuffs, those sorts of things. When I'm doing a collar, I'm interfacing both the upper collar and the under collar. In the old days, I would just do the under collar. But now, because of these soft fusibles, I'm doing both. And the first layer, or maybe the only layer, of the fusible extends out into the seam allowances. So you're covering the whole piece. And many times, I will actually identify where I'm going to be cutting a small piece, like a collar, on my yardage and I will interface the entire section of where I'm going to be cutting so that when I'm cut and I'm fusing the fusible to that section so that when I'm cutting out the collar it's already pre-fused and I don't have to worry about marrying a small piece of interfacing to my collar and getting things distorted and out of shape. So think about doing that. So we have the Japanese ultra sheer fusible. We also have three other fusibles that are also very sheer. And we have, some are, are more appropriate for knits than others, some for wovens, we have that identified on the website. The reason we have these is, frankly, the Japanese interfacing has become quite expensive because of the importing it from Japan. And so we wanted to bring in a nice fusible, lightweight uh, interfacing at a different price point. So we have three different interfacings, two whites and a black that are also very sheer, that are 
quite a bit less than the ultra sheer Japanese interfacing. So we have six interfacing to choose from, and they are on sale for the next week, which is something we've never done. So I must have had a weak moment this morning when I woke up because they are on sale for the next week. So the collar that I have on on the Cortona, and I mentioned that it's all in one, the collar and the stand is cut into one. And notice how I have interfaced a second layer of interfacing through the stand area. So the entire collar, this pink collar, has a layer of fusible Japanese ultra sheer interfacing. You can barely see it. And that interfacing, as I said, extends into the seam allowances. Now I have interfaced the stand portion of this with a second layer. And now I've kept that out of the seam allowances. So two layers of any of these interfacings will give you that enough crispness, that's hard to say, for certain areas like stands. Or maybe you want a, a crisper cuff, that sort of thing. So two layers of the same interfacing will do the trick rather than changing interfacings. All right, I think that's it. Do we have any questions today? Oh, yes. Aaron reminded me that I have on um, the Cortona with my standard Picasso pants in black Ponte knit. But my next project is to make my Picasso pants in one of these chambries. This drape will be fantastic for the Picasso pants. So I don't know. What color should I do? Hmm. I don't know. It may have to be this mid-blue. I'm not sure. I like them all. I might have to have another black pair. So, okay. So you would make Picassos. Would you also make the j new joggers? Oh, would I make the new joggers? Uh, sure. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. We yeah. had a couple uh, comments about yeah, that. Yeah, I would have to think about the bottom band. I would probably have to put a different ribbing on or, a, or add a knit for that because I think I would have trouble getting my foot through a woven band. But other than that, in fact, I might even do, um, uh, if I didn't have ribbing, I would just use knit for the band, and I might do a knit casing waistband. But sure, that'd be fantastic. This does have a little bit of a sheen to it, which may or may not show up on the Facebook Live, uh, but, I, but it's just enough. It's subtle, but it's very nice. And I, so there's a lot of movement to the fabric, not only in the drape, but the, the light bouncing off of it as well. Okay, um, how do you tell the difference between the right and fuse side of the Japanese interfacing? The, um, the fusible side of the Japanese interfacing is slightly rougher than the face side. So if you feel it, you say, oh, that gritty side is the glue. So that's the side that goes down onto my fabric. Uh, would the Liberty um, uh, Tana Lawn work on the Berwick Street tunic? That would be fabulous as a Berwick Street tunic. Yep, I thought about that actually. I almost brought one. We, have, we may have one down there, or one that's similar. That'd be great, yeah. Uh, we have a customer here in Topeka uh, who comes in here and buys whatever Liberty of London fabrics we have. And she is making a, a um, she made a cottage dress, cottage shirt dress. So she took the cottage shirt, lengthened it, and made it into a Liberty dress. If you go on the Liberty of London site, website, you'll see how they use a lot of their prints for dresses, lots and lots of dresses. Um, do you interface with two layers for both the upper and lower collar? No, I only interface uh, once for the, uh, if I'm interfacing a collar, Collar only, it's one layer of interfacing on the upper collar, one layer of interfacing on the under collar. If I'm interfacing the Cortona collar and wanting to support with the second layer, that is on the under collar only. And, um, and again, it's just the same interfacing, it's not heavier. It's not the correct? same, inter it is the same interfacing. Ooh. Right, it's not heavier. <laughs> yes. No, it's okay. not heavier. Okay. Um. It could be, I mean, I'm not saying it could, if you have a weft interfacing on hand in your stash, 
you know, that has a little more support to it and your fabric is really, really drapey and, and wants to sort of collapse on you, you could absolutely add a second layer for the stand in a weft or a, a fusing knit or some sort of heavier interfacing. I think that would be a good idea for some fabrics. Not necessarily for cottons, but for like silks and, well, maybe even this fabric since it's so drapey. The second layer could be a heavier interfacing. Um, can you repeat what you're wearing? And they had a couple questions about your um, checkered top underneath. Oh, uh, <laughs> to... I'm wearing the Cortona shirt, and I have it's been embellished a little bit with some black and white check, a little strip here. The under collar is also in the black and white check, and the band. And I'm wearing a purchased black and white sweater because I'm cold. A uh, question about the uh, Mace on Top video. How long is the video? How, oh, that's a good question. I think it's an hour. Or Do we know? 45 minutes? I don't... Yeah, I, you know, I haven't really... Uh, I didn't take a look at that after the final editing. It's between 45 minutes and an hour. Just long enough to get yeah. all the information out there. Yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, somebody had a question about um, the difference between the first jogger pattern and the new jogger pattern. Um, we just had to update something on the pattern. Um, there's not a big... Yeah, all we did difference. was... Uh, uh, change, we, didn't, we changed some numbering. Uh, it doesn't, we didn't change the pattern. We didn't change the cut lines, the seam lines. We... Uh, caught something in the directions that the directions and the pattern pieces on a couple of pieces didn't have the same number. So that's all it is. So if you have, if you downloaded and paid to download the first version, you're fine. Don't do it again. Um, how much is the zona lengthened? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I would say a good six inches, six, seven inches. I think so. I don't have the pattern with me here. But, yeah. Lots of wonderful comments. I'm going through to see if there's any questions. Um, somebody said they would love for, to have a Facebook Live on the hints for how to get the front of the collar to have a good join at the front. So. Oh, well, we have a, a really good, and in fact, one of the tutorials that's on sale this week is Collars and Stands. And in that tutorial, which is a PDF tutorial, so it's slides, you can follow along really easily, is the joining of that. Uh, no question, that is probably the hardest thing I have to tackle. But uh, hopefully that would help you to just watch that tutorial. Um, somebody wondered if you could show Kathy's top again, um, the black one, I assume. Sure. Kathy's top. The bottom band. Then she's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces that are about two inches wide. She's used the same width as the hem band piece. And she's also put a separate band in the back, separate band in the front, and they overlap, or do they overlap? A little bit. They overlap a little bit at the side seam. And then at the back, she's got one, two, three, four sections of piecing in wovens. And they're not necessarily the same. They're not the same at all as what she's used on the sleeve. So all in all, she's probably used, knowing her, 15 different kimono fabrics. <laughs> yeah. Out of her hundreds. Out of her hundreds, yeah. <laughs> um, someone asked if you could put on the Zona. Sure. This is a size large. Sleeves are a little long. Roll them up.
little string on the uh, <laughs> buttonhole. But there you go. Very nice. You can really wear any size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks good. I probably we could wear it open. <laughs> Yeah, I like this Ona a lot. It has interesting bust darts. It has one coming out of the arm side and one coming out of the side seam. So one's on an angle, one's straight, but you still look very balanced. It's a really interesting and fun garment to make. You know, if you're kind of sick of making the same old thing all the time, try this because it's got some, some very unique uh, asymmetry to it and some construction details that are pretty different. Uh, does the the one, let me go back. The one thing I notice that, that I have to do generally although I wouldn't have to in this one, um, is the, the zona sleeve is pretty slim. So if you, you need to measure your um, biceps, not, these aren't uh, biceps. What are these? Are these biceps? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, the front, I guess, would yeah. be the bicep. The girth the of, yes, <laughs> and your, the girth of your up, upper arm and make sure you have enough ease in the sleeve. That's addressed in our new fitting book that's coming out. It is at the printer, by the way. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, is the, uh, does the Cortona have a dropped shoulder? No, this one may have had a dropped shoulder on me because it's a size too big for me or my, the green one. Uh, but no, not, not really. Okay. And how much length was added for the skirt on the Hudson top, the one that Deb made? Uh, well... I guess I need to get a tape measure here, but this looks like about 14 inches. Well, if, let's assume these are inch, inch squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 inches. 12, how about 12 inches? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think it went down to like just above her knee. Yeah. It? Yeah. Um, so kind of wherever yeah. you want it to fall. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I think that's. Oh, here's one more. Um, with the Maison joggers, do you give instructions for no band at the bottom? Would you lengthen the pant? Um, the answer is uh, probably not. That's something we would maybe deal with in a Zoom call. For the video, I'll be making the joggers as we know them by the pattern. And then we can address some variations and that sort of, sort of thing in the Zoom calls. And I'll think about what that should be. I haven't done that yet, but there's no reason why not. There's a lot of people who don't want that band. I don't always want the band either, uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at that and see what, what can be done. But it won't be part of the video class, I know that. Just remember, those video classes are making the garment by the pattern start to finish. No variations. I, is, the minute I say that, uh, you know, I'm going to break that rule, but whatever. All right, <laughs> the San Diego. <laughs> yeah, exactly. First, that's just, was, that's just why I said that. <laughs> first two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first two months. <laughs> uh, they did uh, a couple questions about how to access the private Facebook page for the um, Facebook the yearly. All right, so go back time. to your email on Friday where you access the class. And in that same email, right below it, is your access to the Facebook Live private page. Mm -hmm. Is that good enough explanation, Erin? Th yeah, that email is pretty key. It, it has lots of yeah. very important links, so keep that. Yeah, keep book, that email. Bookmark um, those links. It's very important. Um, and then Barbara Hartzell, she said, um, where are the, where's the info on the sleeve alterations for the Mason top? And I know you talked about that on the Facebook Live. Yeah, uh, two weeks ago. Yes. Two weeks ago, Kathy Davis and I addressed that in that video. I showed a, a schematic of how to lengthen it, but we are going to talk about that on the Zoom call. So you'll get more information there. But I would, I would reference back to that Facebook Live video that's on our website from two weeks ago. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have I said everything? What's on sale? Fabrics are on sale, 15% off. Patterns, the... Cortona, Zona, Frankie. Frankie, both printed and download are on sale. The interfacing is on sale at 15% off. And two tutorials, five narrow hems. I've done that because these gar some of these garments have these narrow hems. And the collar and collars and stands tutorial as well.
Okay, so thanks so much. We'll see you next week.